wonder if I have to fill in for another minute. <laughs> now you know what a deputy does. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you all. Thank you. Please. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Jim, and thank you, Joe. And when I say thank you all, I mean most sincerely. There is no federal agency and no group of federal employees more deserving of thanks and praise than you. I can't think of an agency that has contributed more to the success of this administration than the Office of Management and Budget. I'm especially grateful for your most recent efforts. Because of the long hours you put in, we were able to send the fiscal year 89 budget to Congress last week. It didn't weigh as much as when we first saw it. And and this is a, an occasion to take pride in what this administration, with the help of OMB, has achieved up to now. We're bringing federal spending under control. As I said in my State of the Union message to Congress, last year, for the first time in 14 years, the federal government spent less in real terms than it spent the year before. We're rooting out fraud, waste, and abuse of taxpayer funds. Thanks to the fine work of our inspectors general, in cooperation with OMB, we're saving the taxpayers scores of billions of dollars that would otherwise be lost. We're reducing the burden of government on our people. Since 1981, the amount of time spent by the public filling out forms required by the federal government has been cut by hundreds of millions of hours, and the number of pages published annually by the Federal Register has been reduced over 45%. We're streamlining the federal government. And we're doing this in two ways. First, we're getting the federal government out of those areas that are best left to the states and to the private sector. And second, we're modernizing and updating federal operations. In a nutshell, making a dollar go further is your job, seeing that the American taxpayers get the best possible return for the hard-earned do earned dollars that they send to Washington every year. I know that it's often a difficult, unglamorous, and thankless job, but this government couldn't function without you. Just riding herd on the federal budget is a staggering task in itself, but of course that's only part of what you do. You review proposed regulations by executive branch agencies to ensure that the benefits will outweigh the costs. You're also the prime mover behind a host of projects designed to make the federal government run more efficiently and economically. And all told, you've saved the taxpayers billions of dollars. And you handle this workload, which has increased steadily over the past seven years, with fewer full-time employees than you had when I took office in 1981. Another thing you do, which is very important to me, is to translate my policies and my priorities down through all of the agencies as you review proposed testimony, legislative proposals, and other agency proposals day in and day out. This is an important function, and I'm grateful for the good work that you do here. I admire your spirit, your energy, your professionalism, and your devotion to duty. You are the shock troops in the battle for better, more cost-effective government. Jim Miller likes to say that you're the cream of the crop. And he's not alone in his opinion. It's mine, too. Let me talk about Jim for a minute. Jim, you know there are no monuments to budget directors in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> but if they ever decide to erect one, I think it should take the form of a giant bulldog. <laughs> bulldog is the mascot of University of Georgia, your alma mater. And let me tell you, you're doing your alma mater proud. You're this administration's budget bulldog, loyal, determined, and fearless. Better management is the M in OMB. And when I talk about better management, there's a man I have to single out for special praise, Joe Wright. Joe, every American taxpayer owes you a debt of gratitude for the fine work that you've done in helping to implement this administration's management reform initiatives. 
You're the master mechanic who's giving the machinery of the federal government the best tune-up it's ever had. But while we can take pride in what we've achieved so far, we should not lose sight of what remains to be done in the future. Much of the work that we've begun will not be completed in the two terms of this administration. Getting the federal government ready to meet the demands of the next century is going to take an ongoing commitment. That's why I'd like to turn now to those of you who remain here after we're gone. OMB employees have always exemplified the highest standards of professionalism and public service. You are what every federal agency ought to be, lean, highly qualified, and effective. So I know that the management legacy that we leave behind will be left in the very best of hands. E earlier, I said that there are no monuments to budget directors, but I'd like to think that if you all continue the fine work that you've been doing over the past seven years, that there will one day be a monument to OMB. I'd like to think that when America enters the 21st century, our national government will be a model of thrift, efficiency, and service. I'd like to think that balanced budgets will be the rule and not the exception, and that the taxpayers will get full value for every dollar they send into the Treasury. I'd like to think that the federal government will be limited to those tasks that only the federal government can perform, and that it will perform those tasks superbly. I'd like to think that federal employees will be admired as a core of top professionals. And now let me take advantage of my advanced age for a moment and tell you something. I can remember back that there was an era in motion pictures, even back at the time before sound had come, and then continued for a while after, that in a lot of the action films and the westerns and so forth, there was a standard line that always, if it was a subtitle in a silent movie or if it was spoken, it always got applause from the audience. And that was there would be a scene where the rustlers or the train robbers and so forth were planning on something they were going to do. And then one of them would propose going against what would be something of the federal, like the Postal Service or something else. And then always the line that got the applause was when someone else in the group would say, no, no, no. Don't take on Uncle Sam. <laughs> and, uh, and believe me, among the people, that's why there was the applause. That was the reputation that Uncle Sam had. And someplace, I think we all know that since then, uh, that kind of changed. Well, let's put it back. I, I think we can do that. This vision can be realized if we keep on working to make it a reality. And when it's a reality, OMB will have its monument. Because each of you here today will be able to say, as was said of another master builder, if you would see his monument, look around. Well, I thank you all, and God bless you all for what you're doing. Thank you. <laughs>